Good day, my plan foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today we will be big box store plan shopping at Lowe's in Prosper, Texas. It is somewhat of a cloudy day today, but as always, I like for you guys to make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for a daily one hour plan shopping videos. And today is a cloudy day out in North Dallas, which is where I am based at. And I do like going to the Prosper um, Lowe's location just because they always have really good plants and they're always restocked and they stay nice and full in terms of their plants. And you can see right here, outside they've got a bunch of mandevilla flowers these mandevilla flowers are tropical flowers and this is um, one that um, several big box stores are actually carrying and you can see right over here they've got some more tropical plants in these planters now i do like the fact that a lot of these tropical planters have mixed tropical plants and for the most part whenever you're buying tropical plants um, you want to make sure that the care um, tips and the lighting conditions are going to be about the same so it's interesting that they have for instance a lantana here mixed with some red coleus and a um a canna lily look at how beautiful that lantana is i would assume that that coleus plant would be one that can tolerate um full sun most coleus plants and this is for 90, uh, 99 that's pretty pricey for a mixed planter by proven winners anyways coleus plants typically prefer shade but they have some hybrids now that can tolerate full sun so maybe that is the case and you can see right here this is the tropical escape series so they've got some type of dracaena right here and then they've got a fern as well as a mandevilla flower so i like that a lot and next to them is um, another type of mixed planter this one is a cordyline kiwi plant love cordyline plants I love it, especially when you grow them out in full sun, they get the best coloration. The thing about cordyline plants is um, they can get a little bit leggy. So the way you can prevent them from getting leggy is just literally trimming them back. You can actually propagate them and they'll remain a little bit more bushy. Um, that's the trick, at least for what I've learned from my grandmother is that cordyline plants just need to be trimmed back and they need a lot of um, sun in order to really thrive. They do best outdoors. And then I'm gonna pan over here and just show you some more um, planter so here is another mixed planter again with some lantana and we have got some coleus plants right over here i would assume that all of these plants can take full sun lantanas definitely need full sun um, as well as that um, canna lily so that's really nice and then we have a bunch of um, plants right over here some more lantana these ones are not a bad price at all i planted a bunch of lantana actually out in my landscape just because i needed some type of ground cover that can really tolerate the the hot summers in north dallas you know um for we get these 100 degree weather and it really sucks um during the spring because there's only so many plants that can really tolerate that heat lantana is one of them and this is for 8.98 at Lowe's and what I like about lantana plants is also they come in a different variety of different colors so I will be collecting a lot of those as well look at the yellow ones right here I like the red ones and also the white ones that I've been seeing and you can see right there tons of lantana and that's the reason why I like to shop at Lowe's um, big box stores you can get a lot of great outdoor plants um, I, I think that outdoor plants there is definitely a season for them you can see here for instance we've got a lot of portolacas portolacas is more of a succulent isk type plant um, this is for 598 they come in a different um, varieties of colors this one is the yellow one i do love yellow flowers as well alongside with pink flowers as well as white flowers if you're going to ask me my favorite types of flowering you know flower clothes those would be it and then they've got even more lantana right here so there's just a surplus of lantana let me know in the comments if you grow lantana and you can see right over here look at how beautiful those white blooms are um, how did they do for you and your locations and um, how big do they get for you now i'm going to walk over here and show you these beautiful variegated leaves these are called sun patients and these ones are for 1098 now sun patients are basically a hybrid of impatient flowers but this one's really cool because not only can these um, sun patients tolerate full sun that's what they want they have beautiful variegation on their leaves so impatience or the original type of flower needs to be in shade so it's just awesome that you know 
the biodiversity that we're getting with plants as we hybridize them and find certain genetics and genes and crossing them all of that just gives us more plants to pick from like you can see here here is another sun patient this one has red blooms and you can see fun facts will triple in size so be ready for them to walk watch we drop when we droop when we need water and there's just lots of fun facts about them i do like the variegation on this one because the other one only had like the yellow um color in the middle but this one actually has a red vein in the middle so i think that's super cool some patients would make great container plants especially if you're going to grow them out in full sun they would make great um, flowers to just plant in a um, area that doesn't get any shade and you can see there's just so many beautiful flowers. They got more some patients right here. Mandevilla flowers in hanging baskets right over there. And you can see the original um, impatients are over there. Those ones will need um, shade. even gotten to the indoor tropical plants don't worry please make sure you are sticking around but um you know for my most current um videos that i'm doing for plant shopping i really want to highlight a lot of the outdoor plants just because it is that season and i want to really diversify the types of plants that i am showing in my um, plant shopping videos so bear with me i know that there is a plan for everybody and you can see right here we've got some marigold plants here really like that a lot these are the french marigolds and these ones are for 13.98 so you get a little bit of a pack right here and you can grow a lot of these marigolds will do best in full sun and make sure that if you're going to fertilize them not to fertilize them with a lot of nitrogen otherwise you'll get more foliage versus blooms and i would say that a lot with just most of the flowering plants that you grow outdoors but as you can pan away from here you can see lots of hanging baskets with lows and then they've just got a lot of mixed planters here you can see that there is a banana plant here with some potato vine plants the neon versions and also the purple one and as you walk inside you can see that this Lowe's remains super full i love it even on a cloudy day these um, plants will bring you a lot of sunshine they bring me a lot of joy i just like looking at them and you know i've stated this in a lot of my other previous videos I like to utilize my plant shopping videos as more of like a blog or some some venue where I can actually have a platform where I can talk about plants and just give you my insights, whether it's about plants or even my day-to-day -day personal life. Um, I really appreciate all of my plant foldies. And if you are new to my channel, I call my um, viewers and subscribers plant foldies. Um, just because you guys have been regulars every single live premiere chat i swear you guys are on it even if i can't always premiere right on time at 7 p.m central standard time even if it's at nine o'clock you guys will show up and i've seen recently a lot of new people coming in um, to the live premiere so i appreciate that a lot but you can see i've panned over a bunch of petunias salvia flowers we've got a lot of flowers right over here so let me know in the comments, Plant Foldies, if you shop at a lot of these big box stores, like which one do you prefer? Do you prefer Lowe's, Home Depot, or, or Walmart? Um, honestly, I like to shop at all three just because I can compare and contrast pricing. Um, you can even see right over here, this is a beautiful Kalia Lily. Love the yellow blooms, and I love Kalia Lilies in the fact that they are perennials. And what that means is, if a plant is classified as perennial it means that it grows a whole season and then it dies down in like the winter but will come back in the spring it depends on your growing um, zone so for me my zone i think is in um, 8a so whenever i go plant shopping um, it's always best to look at your growing zones uh, and really do your research and you can see here we've got some cactus right here i don't have any cactus in my plant collection i've recently started to bring a little bit more succulents into my collection i recently bought an aeonium kiwiweed, which i bought at lowe's so i was really excited about that. It's one of my favorite um succulents but you can see here lots of assorted succulents and these are by oasis plants so oasis plants will source out like this crusala or jade plant and this one is not a bad price at all as well love jade plants very easy to grow and there's a lot of varieties of jade plants i know that you guys have requested to see more jade plants super easy and they can even become like a succulent bonsai so that's something to look out for i might do some more of those and i want to pan over here this is an amazing looking cordyline kiwi plant this is a large version of it and as you can see look at all of the electrifying colors we have we've got some pink um, magenta um, neon green yellows 
What a gorgeous looking cordyline plant. And again, cordylines can get very large. I would say they are best grown outdoors. Some people have attempted to grow them indoors, but the only thing about cordyline plants are when grown indoors, they really are susceptible to spider mites. And I don't really know the reason why, but that is really the case for it. I would like to grow the compact version of cordyline plants. I've seen them at a local plant nursery called Callaways, which I often feature. And I actually will show you some Callaway plants later on in this video. So please make sure you continue to um, stay tuned. And you can see on this side, I'm just going to go pan over several different types of succulents. Now, the thing I know about succulents is number one, succulents do need full sun. Number two, they really don't like super hot weather from what I've been told. And number three, if you're going to plant succulents, you want to put them in a medium or a substrate that is actually fast draining, like a succulent type soil or maybe some bonsai soil. And you don't really want to overwater them. It's better that they are actually left to dry out completely before watering them. And you can see here for $14.98, we've got a crown of thorns. So crown of thorns is another type of succulent plant that actually has a lot of beautiful blooms. I really like that a lot. And this is actually a kalanchoe that I really like. This is kalanchoe fangs, really nice texture. And then here is a crusala tetragona or a jade tetragona. This one's for $39.98, but look at all of that. Really like that the um, leaves or the foliage is a little bit um, just thinner. And then this one right here is a Taiwan um, red Zora plant. Nice um, tropical plant right there. And then we're going to pass over some more Crusala Tetragonas. But you can see that this Lowe's has a lot of plants. I love that their outdoor section is really filling up. And you can go to Lowe's um, and just find some beautiful outdoor plants. Like this is an Agave Matsumoto for $39.99. Really like all of the Oasis plants of you know different types of agave succulents aloe veras cacti you name it they've got it and there's some really good pricing and you can see right here this is a yucca plant a variegated version this kind of looks like a dracaena riki now this one is for 39.98 um really like that a lot now plant foldies let me know what you think about agave um, I really love it when you guys leave comments in the comment section after my video premieres, or if you're a new video, give me your insights. I mean, like this one right here is a pencil milk bush. What a nice looking plant. And then we've got some more succulents here, but I think that's what makes my um, channel interesting to me is because of the community we're growing i like to invest time in being able to talk to you guys you know if you're not following me on instagram please follow me at growfolds you can send me a direct message i pretty much reply to everybody unless it's some type of scam or um, spam mail so please refrain from doing that but i love to get to know all of my viewers and subscribers um, it's always fun to learn from you guys. So as much as I give you guys like a lot of like insights about plants, I am nowhere near a pro. I just give you my, you know, from my experience. And over here is another Aeonium Wartok, Wart Cop, I think that's how you pronounce it, or the Black Rose Aeonium. What a gorgeous looking um, succulent. And I just love the look of this one. They grow so well in California. I don't know if it's just because of the weather, I really want to attempt to be able to grow these successfully. There are some beautiful Aeoniums. I think they are my favorite um, succulent for sure. Very easy to propagate and they can get very large. Some um, can become more tree-like, some are more like ground cover. And you can see right here, this is an interesting type of agave. Love how like the borders of the foliage um, kind of glow. And then here is another type of succulent here. This is an Aeonium um, kiwi. What a gorgeous looking Aeonium. And what I like about it is it's only for $9.98. That's not a bad price at all. You can see that this Aeonium Kiwi will actually get better um, coloration. You'll get more pinks if you really just flood it in full sun. Now, the only thing about growing Aeoniums in um, Texas is when it's really hot in the summer, you actually have to bring them inside because they prefer cooler conditions or at least more temperate conditions somewhere in the like 75s and 80s. And that's just not going to happen in North Dallas summer you know that's just uh, a fact but i will walk over here and show you some more plants
from my previous um, shopping videos, I have really been talking about dahlias. I love dahlias and look at this beautiful coloration on dahlias. I like that it's a dark foliage dahlia too. So this might be something I might eventually grow in my landscape. I have been putting more perennials in my garden just to see if I can get them to actually grow next year in the spring. And then I've also loved, love, love encore azaleas or azaleas in general. The reason why I like um, you know, azaleas is because they remind me of Japanese gardens and that's really um, an aesthetic that I like. I love the Japanese aesthetic, bonsai, you know, azaleas, Japanese maples, kokedama, all of that. I really like just a Japanese aesthetic. And when I think about Japanese aesthetics, I think about azaleas. They're so beautiful. And I do love the fact that azaleas, encore azaleas, will bloom um, multiple times a year. And speaking of Japanese aesthetics, here is an Acer di um, Dissectum um, Crimson Queen. I also love Japanese maples. So here's a little tidbit about me. Um, I am also obsessed with Japanese maples and I have um, a, a pretty good collection growing. The problem with Japanese maples, at least for me, is I don't really have a lot of shade to protect them in the hot uh, afternoon sun. But as I get my Shangtung maple, which is very hot and heat tolerant, to grow larger in a bigger canopy, I'll be able to grow more Japanese maples. I get a lot of my Japanese maples from Metro Maples, which is a um, Japanese maple nursery in Fort Worth, Texas. I actually have a video if you want to check that out. And I also buy from mrmaple.com love their work and then you know japanese maples that's a whole different world so i'm hoping that we can get some more viewers to be interested in japanese maples i definitely will feature more of that and you can see over here we've got some nandina nandina is a very easy shrub to grow even in texas what i like is that they change their colors in the fall it becomes like a fiery red color and um, we've got some more Acer palmatum or Japanese maples available right here. Again, Japanese maples are a little bit more challenging growing them in North Dallas, but needless to say, the ones that I have so far are doing well. Um, they're easier to grow in the ground in zones M8A, which is where my growing zone is. And you can see right here, some Jasmine. Love Jasmine, um, they smell great, they smell fragrant. One of my favorite Jasmine would be the Arabian Jasmine, or the, um, the National of the Flower of the Philippines, which is where I'm from, it's called Sampaguita. So cool um, to see that Jasmine is available to purchase at a big box store like Lowe's. And you can see right over here, we've got some ground cover. I will always show you this Ajuga. I don't know, for some reason, even for 468, you can save some money and get some really nice um, ground cover. I love Ajuga just because of just it just looks like a vegetable and I'm growing it in a container and it's growing very well. I actually have it in full sun and I'm getting a lot more pink variegation. And speaking of pink variegation, look at this beautiful Rodeo oyster plant. This one is for $4.98. Love, love the underside of the leaves. It's got that purple pink tone about it. And then just a the striping pink variegation right next to this variegated um, potato vine right here. This might actually be one that I might buy. The reason why, or the Ipomoia, I don't know how to pronounce the correct way, but you know, those variegated plants are really nice. And then you can see here, we've got some more dark foliage plants. I have been eyeing this particular plant. It's called an Alternathera. I think that's how you pronounce it, 698. And we've got some coral bells right here. Love that silver purple tone about it. And we just got some more pansies here. Now pansies will not do very well um, in the summer because they prefer cooler weather. And obviously we've got to look at these beautiful caladiums by proven winners. So caladiums are popping, um, caladiums are coming out. I always say caladiums are like the more colorful version of an alocasia and maybe even uh, looks very similar to like a juvenile form of a syngonium. This is a gorgeous looking one. Look at that red veining. And so what I would say about caladiums is if you're going to grow them from bulbs, they really won't start to sprout until it gets a hotter weather. So sometime in the summer, but these caladiums obviously were grown in a condition where they kind of mimic um, warmer weather love proven winter plants. I think proven winter plants are nice because they have different types of hybrids and they're healthy and they're fairly priced. You can see right here, caladium heart to heart. Look at how beautiful and red this caladium is. 
Now, I've asked this before, and I really hope you guys will give me insights, but how many of you guys watching this video right now have grown Caladium successfully year round? And when I say year round, being able to grow them indoors, like over the winter, obviously Caladiums will go dormant. Do you guys, or have you been successful in being able to grow Caladiums indoors? Um, I would think that growing Caladiums indoors, you would need to put them in like a, under a grow light to mimic more light also and keep them in like warmer conditions. This Waikiki Sunrise Lysimachia, I think that's how you pronounce it, for $6.98, has some beautiful variegation. Love that yellow, green on green variegation. I was actually curious to think about possibly growing this indoors as kind of like a hanging basket plant. Um, I will have to do more research on it, but for $6.98, that's not bad. This one has different variegation, so it's got either yellow or straight green variegation. This actually flowers, um, yellow flowers as well. So this might be something that I might actually buy. Now, plant foldies, what do you think about this particular plant? I ask a lot of questions because I really want to boost the engagement um, with all of us. Like right here, um, can you imagine finding a trade scanthia nanu? This is for $4.98. Gorgeous looking plant. Trade scanthias are so easy to grow. The only problem is with trade scanthia, whether it's the nanook or the burgundy, is you need to make sure that you're pinching it back otherwise they get very leggy and you can see right here they've got some um, rodeo oyster plants so all of these pink plants together love that a lot and i love collecting pink plants but you can see here this Lowe's just has it going on like i mean look at how full it is and i love the fact that i'm filming at noon when there's not a lot of people it's easier for me to really feature the plants, but you can see right over here, look at this tray, just tray of different type of coleus plants. I know you've been watching my videos, or if you have been following my videos for the last couple of weeks, I have grown an obsession with coleus plants. Like I want to collect every variety. I've started growing them from seed. The ones that are from seed have started showing signs of what colors they can potentially be. And these are all of the coleus for $1.98. I happened to get lucky and get coleus for a dollar um, when they were running that five for five annuals um, sale at Lowe's. And you can see here, there's just different varieties. Now, some of these coleus, I'm not 100% sure, may be able to take full sun, but I would just assume that most coleus plants would prefer to be more in like bright indirect light, uh, morning sun, and then afternoon shade, but these are for $1.98. And what I love about coleus plants, if I haven't told you already, is they can be grown indoors. And there are some gorgeous looking coleus that I've seen on Instagram where people have literally grown them indoors and train them to become more of a tree indoors because as the coleus matures their stems become a little bit more woody and over here we've got a bunch of polka dot plants it's amazing how pink red and white these polka dot plants are they're gorgeous um, they're just a little bit difficult for me to grow indoors and you can see right here a variegated boat lily i bought this actually I'm a while back and it's growing beautifully in a container. It's another plant that I would love to be able to grow indoors once winter comes. Um, the variegated boat lily I got though had a lot of pink variegation. These ones just have a lot of purple. Um, so it really depends, I suppose, with the amount of light you um, give it. Mine is growing in full sun and it is really thriving. I might actually cut it back a little bit so I can propagate more cuttings. And you can see right here, variegated gingers. Love that a lot. Variegated gingers are kind of similar to like um, cordyline plants like this. They do better outdoors, even though some people try to grow them indoors. I haven't had the best luck. And you can see right here, we've got some Fatsa japonica or Japanese Aurelia, gorgeous plant. I've got the camouflage version. I'm trying to get the um, Fatsa japonica spider's web one too, because it has some really good variegation. But look at how gorgeous all of these coleus plants are. I hope you plant foldies are going to be influenced by me to grow some coleus because there's some really cool looking plants. And right over here, look at this. For $19.98, you've got a full basket of trade scanthia, but just a white cream version. How beautiful is this? And it's super full. You can actually take several cuttings of this and propagate it. What a gorgeous looking plant. Um, I love trade scanthia as well. I love them when they're super full. When they start to get leggy, um, I'm a little bit, you know, disappointed. But, you know, it's about making sure you do have the time to really spend upkeeping, you know, doing plant chores. I have been fairly bad about, you know, 
keeping my plants um you know up to date with my plant chores like i've skipped watering which has resulted in me killing a couple of plants but anyways i did want to pan over here and give you guys a little bit of a commercial break so i will be unboxing um some plants that i bought from the green escape off of etsy super excited that i was able to get some of these plants what i love about the green escape is it is one of the biggest um online plant shops that you can get some rare and uncommon plants they have their plants fairly priced now i will say most of the plants that come from the green escape um, are starter plants so they usually come in two inch starter plugs which i don't mind at all but the two plants i ended up buying were a variegated um polia plant the a variegated aluminum plant and an aglonema um, lotus delight now, Aglonema Dolt Lotus Delight is one of the most beautiful aglonemas. They're just very challenging to find at the United States, which is where I'm based at, without having to spend $200, $300 for like a three inch starter planter for an aglonema. So I decided to buy a starter plug from the Green Escape. Love the Green Escape, and I just love how they are, their packaging is really nice. And I like the fact that, you know, they, they personalize it. It's really easy um, to get some plants that you want. There's actually several plants that I want to buy from the Green Escape. Several types of Syngonium, several types of Aglonema. But as you can see here, I'm just carefully unwrapping this because I don't want to tear any leaves. And that's the thing about when you go um, buy plants and you're unboxing, you really have to take your time when unboxing. But you can see here, they've got some protection here. So I'm just gonna get some of this um, out and I'm gonna go ahead and just try to, you know, be careful cutting these. So this actually needs to be planted in maybe like a three inch um, starter planter. And you can see here, while this is definitely a very juvenile form of the Aglonema Lotus Delight, I urge everybody to, ch um, to you know, Google this or search online what the actual mature um, plant looks like. It is one of the most gorgeous looking Aglonemas. This Aglonema is actually a hybrid that was made in Indonesia. And then the next plant I'm going to get is a um, Polia. Um, variegated polia plant or a variegated um, aluminum plant so this one is one that i want to try to grow out propagate and get some more plants i've been told that it's a little bit slower growing just because of the variegation but you know i talk about very you know polia plants every time i go to like grocery stores plant shopping but look at how gorgeous this is do you look look at that look at how the variegation is plant foldies let me know what you think about this variegated polia and again with the green escape um very fair price plant i was able to get some really good plants and they're always healthy and it's a way to be able to get some uncommon plants without having to spend a lot of money it will take a little bit of time to grow these but you know what that is the beauty of plant growing sometimes we want instant gratification but sometimes we want to also see a plant grow from a baby stage like this and really look back after to, um time you know taking care of them for quite some time and really be satisfied with the end result so um, i wanted to plug this in there's a couple of other clips that i wanted to put into my plan shopping videos just because i wanted to um, break out some of the monotony that possibly happens with talking about the same plant so plant foley's let me know what you think about my unboxing here what do you think about the aglonema um, lotus delight and obviously this gorgeous looking uh, variegated polia plant now with polia plants they do need a little bit more um, humidity you want to keep their soil moist and you want to trim them back so they don't get leggy but but coming back to the low so now we're gonna walk over inside and take out take a look at some of the indoor tropical plants I know most of you um, viewers um, prefer the indoor tropical plants and don't worry just because I am featuring more outdoor plants it doesn't mean that I will not be featuring I love the indoor tropical plants I just happen to like all sorts of plants so um, hopefully there is a plan for somebody that is watching my videos today and I want to pan over here and just show you how full this place is and even um, the, the merchandising of this big box store this Lowe's is awesome love the prosper location it's super clean their employees are very nice as well and I'm just going to pan over here and show you what plants they've got available
What a gorgeous begonia maculata by Costa Farns Training Tropicals. This is for 1984. As always, begonia maculata is a classic begonia. Really liked it a lot. And I finally was able to get one for my grandmother because I remember giving her begonia maculata and she was able to propagate several of them. And I've got a free plant from her. And right over here, we got a Sansevieria moonshine in a self-watering planter by Costa Farms. This one is for $15.98. And then we also have a Spathophyllum or Peace Lily. Look at the gorgeous green leaves. And this one is also for $15.98. Um, Peace Lilies, um, what I love about it is it is an easy care plant because it can tolerate lower light conditions, but you do have to give it a lot of water. But if it's in a self-watering planter, that it makes it easier to grow. And we've got some Dendrobium orchids right here in a crate. Look at how beautiful those yellow um, blooms are on this particular orchid. Really like that a lot. And then obviously you can't go to Lowe's without seeing some beautiful um, Philanopsis orchids. Like again, Philanopsis orchids are everywhere. You can go to a grocery store, a big box store, a local plant nursery, a convenience store for it by any means. And you might be able to find um, a Philanopsis orchids. It is amazing how um, Philanopsis orchids are available year round any season and i love them as well i was able to find like a variegated one but look at these dendrobium orchid blooms look at that isn't that stunning and then right over here as i walk over there's some more plants lots of hanging baskets from costa farms and then we've also got a lot of small um, exotic angel plants by costa farms and look at look at here they've got another restock of epipremnum arium golden pothos one of my favorite plants to look at at this point is a snow white waffle plant this one is for $7.98. So I've tried to grow the Snow White Waffle plant. Mine has pretty much gotten crispy and I just didn't do well. I, I think it's because see, I don't really water my plants as often as I should. And this one definitely needs to stay moist. The soil needs to stay moist and humidity. And this is probably why I'm a little bit weary about adding ferns because most ferns need to remain a little bit more moist. Like look at how beautiful this lemon button fern is, for instance. Now this one is for $7.98. And I will say if you go to Lowe's or a big box store, in terms of your house plants or indoor tropical plants, you can save a lot of money because they're fairly priced. I would say Walmart probably has the most cost effective pricing, but Lowe's has a lot of diversity when it comes to cost of farms plants. Look at this beautiful Syngonium, for instance. This one is only for $5.98 in a starter plant, and it's already got some pretty um, large leaves. I really like that a lot. And there's just so many plant products that you can get at a big box store. I know I get a lot of my soil from Lowe's. There's a particular soil that I buy called tree and shrub soil that I mix with like orchid bark, perlite, and some worm castings. And that's what I use for to pot up my plants. And that's the thing about going to a big box store, especially Lowe's. I think Lowe's is one of my favorite places to get all of my plant supplies and even my fertilizers. And you can see right over here, we've got a Peperomia Golden Gate. This one is for $5.98. Really like that a lot. Um, it's one that I bought, actually, I bought a larger one from HEB for $6. So it really depends, again, when you go plant shopping. Now, plant foldies, I know you guys are from all over the United States and I've got some international viewers. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, shout out to all of my Canadian plant foldies. I really hope that you guys get warmer weather and we'll be able to get some more plants that I feature. I know most of you guys live through my um, plant shopping videos vicariously. So I hope a lot of these plants like this Plea Molis brings you joy. Again, it's just so exciting. When I say I'm so excited to be able to just make videos, talk about plants for an hour, chat with you guys during the live premiere chats, engage with you guys on social media like Instagram. It brings me a lot of joy. And just remember our Growfold Plant Foldy community is for everybody. Everybody is welcome. And if you are watching this for the first time live during a live premiere, please do not be shy to ask any questions, to say hi to all of us. We wanna meet you, we wanna connect with you. And I hope that you guys will be kind enough to share all of my plant shopping videos with other plant lovers. Um, I really want to see our plant community grow. I'm hoping that we can hit um, 10,000 views subscribers by the middle of um, May. So we'll see about that. But you can see I've already shown you guys a lot of plants. We've, I've shown you a variety of different types of syngoniums and Dracaena warneckii. Those are all um, really easy to care for plants. I would say Dracaenas are probably the most um, easy plant to take care of because of the lighting conditions. They don't require a lot of light and they can tolerate being underwatered, which means if you don't really water them as much, they still will, will do well. 
And right over here, we've got a gorgeous looking Monstera Deliciosas. I've noticed that Costa Farms has released a lot of those Monstera Del Deliciosas at Lowe's. Those are for $22.98. And look at how gorgeous this um, Syngonium, it, um, Pink Syngonium is right here. This is by Urban Jungle, and this one's for $13.98. Urban Jungle has some really cost effective plants. I will say if you want to save money on plants from Urban Jungle, go to a Kroger or a grocery plant shop. Um, they sell um, hanging baskets for $12.99. And speaking of hanging baskets, look at this gorgeous Epipremium Arium Manjula Pothos. This one is for $16.98. It's in a smaller hanging basket. And to my plant fully viewer subscriber, Steven, don't worry. Your Manjula Pothos I got um, a while back is doing well. Um, I am taking care of it. It's actually pushing out some new growth. So um, for my local plant foldies, um, leave in the comments if you want me to find plants for you or at least direct you in a way where you can find your wish list plant, especially if you live in the, door, in the Dallas North, you know, Dallas Fort Worth area. I would love to be able to help you out. And you can see here, Philodendron Heteracium Brazil, $22.98 by Live Trends. Or is it Live Trends or Urban Jungle? Beautiful plant. I love that variegation. It's really variegated, actually. And then it just makes me excited to be able to see all of these different plants. It's it's awesome. And um, I don't know, some of the random plants you will find at a big box, or you never, you will be surprised. And you, I know somebody asked me to show them an African violet. There you go. There's an African violet at Lowe's. My African violet, my only one and only African violet is doing very well. And you can see right here, got more hanging baskets of plants. right here we've got some bromeliads what a gorgeous looking bromeliad and then we've got some ficus elastica ruby right here those are by live trends and in several hanging baskets from costa farms um, i want to pull this one hanging basket down right here so this is an epipremnum arium pearls and jade this is not an enjoy so some people will label this enjoy the reason why this is a pearls and jade is it's um variegation is um you know got some high contrast but there's some speckling going on that one's for $20.98 in a hanging basket. I love all pothos plants. And I've asked this question before, but plant foldies, what are your um, favorite pothos plants or Epipremnum arium? Leave them in the comments or in the live premiere chats. They're so easy to grow. And you can see right here, we've got a Fetonia. And this Fetonia is actually for $7.98. It looks like it's in bloom. So it looks like it's happy and has some good growing conditions. I really love that a lot. And you can see right here, we've got another Croton love me some sunny star croton look at that yellow leaf right there i love that the leaves are a little bit thinner and it's got that yellow um vein it's beautiful and with crotons my best advice for crotons is grow them outdoors in full sun and they will do very well and then over here we've got some more hanging baskets what else do we have here we've got another hedra helix or what you call it, a Hedera Helix. That's the correct way to say English Ivy. This is the Bettina version. I actually had that one. It is my only English Ivy that is left. I ended up failing from my Hedra Helix challenge because I ended up not watering it, my English Ivy for two weeks and it just didn't do very well. It declined in health very quickly. You can see here, we've got some bonsai um, by Costa Farms. They got a variety of different kinds and another Hedra Helix or the Hedera Helix English Ivy. This is the English Ivy Asterix. Really cool looking one. I really like the look of that, but I'm just tempted to buy English Ivy. It's just, I know, I know I just won't be able to grow them successfully indoors. So why continue to um, have a plant break your heart? I just really, really wish the English Ivy would love me back. Maybe I just need to give them even more, you know, more delicate care, but you know, I, I don't know. I'm just confused when it comes to English Ivy. Some people can grow them very well. One of my really good friends, Isaac, who also has a YouTube channel called Hi JR Sings, his English Ivy is neglected and for some reason it doesn't get spider mites and it's still growing. One plant that you can neglect and grow very well would be a Raven ZZ plant. These are Trending Tropicals by Costa Farms for 1984 right next to a bunch of Sansevieria Moonshine. I really like the Raven ZZ because um, 
it just has such a beautiful foliage it's that dark shiny foliage and being in a self-watering planter just makes it so much easier to grow um, they are actually a fairly fast growing umzizi plant um, I, some people say they're slow growing but they've grown very well for me um, and they just do well you can see beautiful br um, bromeliads and begonia maculata so just the different types of colors and textures of the leaves it's really nice and i love um this this lows at prosper you know you've got some fiddle fig leaves here and we've got some birds nest ferns and then we've just got a mixed a variety of different types of plants it's starting to get sunny outside and you can see here easy care of plants aglonema white rain um, and then we also have a raven's easy right here and then an aglonema red siam right here next to a bromeliad all very easy to care for plants Plants I would recommend. So if you are um, new to my channel, I hope that you can take some of my plant recommendations, ask me any questions. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. And I did want to go pan over here and show you these Bradford pear tree that um, was in full bloom at my, um, my backyard. Isn't that gorgeous? Right next to my peach tree. So these are shades of spring. These were actually about three weeks ago, but I, I forgot to actually put it in one of my clips. But do you see how gorgeous these blooms are from my peach tree? I actually bought this peach tree um, a year ago and even within a year it has grown very large i bought it from lowe's of all places and i'm growing a peach tree not necessarily for the peaches but for the beautiful blooms again i am working on getting a japanese garden but isn't that lovely having a peach tree right next to a massive um, bradford pear and you can see in the background my japanese maples haven't leafed out but i did want to show you these beautiful blooms of peach trees i also have a variegated peach tree now with peach trees or um you know fruit trees you need to give it full sun and um, you just have to really watch out for birds um, if you really want to save the the fruit because I know that a lot of my peaches end up getting pecked by birds so when they get ripe I want to try to grab them as soon as possible but again let me know in the comments what you think about this that Bradford pear is gorgeous as well as my satsuki azalea so I talk about you know trying to grow a Japanese garden look at my beautiful satsuki azalea I bought this the, the you know satsuki azaleas you cannot really buy them at like you know local plant nurseries i went to a specialty um, nursery called metro maples and scott hubble who actually um, is the owner and grower of these plants has a bunch of rare um, satsuki azalea so if you are in the north dallas or fort worth area please make, check out metro maples because they've got beautiful azalea like that and now i want to show you this right here so i'm going to different places this is grocery plant shopping at the trader joe's off of mckinney texas right off of el dorado road next to um, i-75 so i'm growing at night so there may not be as many plants here but i did want to show you and it looks like the plants have been picked up and a lot of people have um, already bought these plants but you can see right here beautiful hyacinth so this one is in just a jar and that's really cool i wish most people can smell hyacinths they are so lovely they smell so fragrant and hyacinths remind me of animal crossing new horizons it's a nintendo um, switch video game where you you know have a bunch of villagers in an island i grew a bunch of hyacinths on my um, island and every time i look at uh, hyacinths and surprisingly this was the first time in um, I was able to see like hyacinths in real life this year. And you can see right here, Azalea Simsii or Indoor Azalea for $10.99. That is a really good deal considering these Azaleas are usually sold for $19.99 at Kroger. So you can see this is in a six inch starter planter, very delicate, beautiful pink blooms, um, $10.99. So I already know where I need to get my Azaleas. It looks like, you know, Trader Joe's has a bunch of Azaleas. Maybe they are in in season, but I love the look of Azaleas. The only thing about Azaleas, and I will say this again, if you're gonna grow the indoor azalea or azalea simsii you definitely have to water this frequently as in keeping the water moist and um, you want to keep it in an area where it doesn't get too hot it really prefers temperatures within like the 70 75 range um, otherwise the plant won't do very well um, they are not really meant to grow outdoors in a landscape perhaps you can grow them in a patio but these plants are really meant to be in cooler conditions and you definitely do not want to let the, the soil um, dry out, otherwise they will die. I mean, that's kind of what happened to me. So I kind of learned my lesson on that. I might buy indoor azalea someday again, but for now, um, unless I can, 
I guess commit to the watering um, requirements. I just feel like that's not a plant that I can, you know, su sustainably grow in my household. And you can see here, they've got some more blooming plants and they've got some really cool carnivorous plants. So they've got some Venus fly traps right here for $5.99, super cool. I don't have any car carnivorous plants at all. And it's really cool that they have like plant, uh, you know, they've got some flies that you know that are sticker over there they're not real flies but you can see here the pitcher plant as well this is a mini pitcher plant when i went to plant con i was able to see carnivero which is a specialty um, nursery based out in austin texas where they were selling huge pitcher plants so for those actually watching my video please take a look at my plant con uh, 2024 video i just recently went to plant con in houston texas and it was amazing you'll see a lot of rare and um, uncommon um, aeroids and just different types of plants and I want to show you these roses I love roses I love the smell of roses I'm actually debating on whether I should grow some roses so I can have some roses to make as rose tea and you can see here hydrangeas are often seen at grocery stores around this time of the year but you can see how beautiful these roses are I am a huge fan of Trader Joe's plants because um, they do sell I would say Trader Joe's has some really good um, pricing for plants as well I mean you can tell because these um, plants are fairly priced, especially those azalea and their foliage plants in a decorated pot. This is another Calathea medallion. This one is for $7.99. That's not a bad price for Calatheas. Um, Calatheas are a finicky plant. And I will say Calatheas care tips, bright indirect light, their soil needs to remain moist. Water them with um, water that is not from tap and they need a lot of humidity. And you can see here, they've got some hanging baskets for $9.99. That is not a bad one at all. This is a Belus plant. This is one that I would always see at Walmart as well by Costa Farms. But you can see here, they got it at Trader Joe's for $9.99. That they're, they're calling it a tabletop plant, hanging plant. And you can see right here, this is a UFO or a Chinese money plant um, for $9.99. I'd probably need to get one of these because those are super cool as well. And then what else do we have here? We've got some... Um, bird's nest fern in a basket that's really cool love the look of the bird's nest fern this has some really good texture now what i like about bird's nest fern is they do get really large i have to do a little bit more research on like the watering requirements for it but i would say i that could be the first fern i would add and then we got some more monstera deliciosas for 19.99 that's not a bad price at all considering those leaves are fairly semi-mature and then you can see here 7.99 for this big um, basket full of syngonium like pink syngonium what a gorgeous looking plant um, I'm almost tempted to buy this pink syngonium because it's super full and that is a really good price for a five inch starter planter um, at Trader Joe's so Trader Joe's is known to have some really cool plants they've gotten some alocasias in the past like an alocasia stingray alocasia Fridex that you can find who knows, they might eventually get some variegated alocasias, but you can see here it is in the evening, so a lot of these plants have been picked up. But, but this one right here is a cool alocasia. I don't specifically know what this alocasia is, but look at the stems are black, straight black stems. I almost want to buy this alocasia, you know. I, I have this fascination with alocasia because not only are they gorgeous, but they are a challenging plant, and I, I am always up for a challenge. Um, but this one right here is beautiful. I remember seeing this kind of alocasia, but a variegated form at Plant Con as well. And what I like about, um, you know, alocasia is that they actually grow quorum so you can get babies. And then the last location I wanted to show you, and I hope you guys stick around, is one of my favorite Callaway's nurseries. This Callaway nursery is um, in Prosper, Texas and it is a rainy day it is a rainy day for sure and i'm just going to be out here hopefully to be able to film some of their plants they always get restocks here and i wanted to walk over here and show you this so i'm about these um variegated um hibiscus this one is a different type of variegated hibiscus i might end up buying this because look at how beautiful the variegation is and um, i'm not sure about the price but look at that isn't that a gorgeous looking um, variegated hibiscus and what i like about it is this variegated plant actually can take full sun and it blooms those beautiful um, hibiscus flowers i would think that this would be an easy one to propagate and as i walk over here they've just got lots of different types of flowers annuals you name it callaways has it callaways is a local plant nursery in the dfw market they've got several um different locations it's one of the best um plant nursery chains and the dfw for sure 
And you can see here as I walk in how full and beautiful this location is and probably um, love the fact that it is raining because there's not as many people out shopping you know imagine going here on a weekend when it's nice and sunny the amount of people shopping here and one of my favorite plants that i've already bought this one is a um, coleus wasabi look at that neon um, look on the, the the leaves and it looks lovely it looks like it would grow fairly fast and then we've got another type of um, quartz size plant here. This is another begonia, really like that as well. Um, these are all for $6.99. The ones in the quartz size are for $6.99. And again, Callaway's is one of the best plant um, shops to go to. You will save a lot of money because their plants are fairly priced. guys are not getting tired of me featuring coleus plants again i just have a, a plant obsession with coleus plants now these are starter plants for 2.99 look at how beautiful that orange foliage is right here it looks like um callaways this callaways just got um, more trays of coleus plants again coleus plants are gorgeous plants that you can grow as annuals meaning that you shouldn't expect them to grow back next year but you can plant them in a landscape a shaded area and they will grow i am currently growing a bunch of coleus um, in my front patio and my back patio in um, containers because I'm hoping that I'll be able to grow them indoors but you can see with coleus plants there's just so many varieties different types of colors I actually um, recently found a specific youtuber who just features coleus plants so I've been binge watching his content um, but with coleus plants what I like about them is they are easily hybridized so you might be able to get some seeds from your coleus plants and you never know you might get some cool plants that look like this there's different types of um, leaf shapes and varieties some coleus can tolerate full sun which is what you call sun coleus not sure about these ones but look at this right here for $12.99 look at how serrated and dark and thin these leaves are I want to get more of these types of coleus plants I just want to collect all the coleus because they're easy to propagate and perhaps my grandmother is the one who really just inspired me to um, grow coleus um, these are all for $12.99 that's not a bad price at all considering there's a lot of um, you know there's a lot of varieties but um, where I'm from my family's from the Philippines they call coleus plants Mayana plants and Mayana plants are actually grown more of like a tree form um, I like that a lot so maybe I'll be able to grow some and you can see here different varieties of coleus plants I like this one as well I actually like all of them I would buy all of them but the one I definitely want to get is this one I'm glad they got this back in stock this one is a beautiful one because it's got some purple i like the purple color of the leaves it's really nice it's got some pink um, coloration as well and it's got a nice leaf shape um, it's got a different type of texture so that's definitely going to be bought today and then you, if you see how we have another coleus this wasabi one is just really a nice one it has grown very well for me i actually repotted it in a eight inch planter and it is already starting to push out more leaves i plan on chopping up a lot of my coleus so i can propagate them even more and see if i can get like a full grown garden of just coleus plants now i recently bought one of these coleus plants here i wish they had plant ids for coleus a lot of them just don't have plant ids this one is for 12.99 um, i'll hold off on this one i may eventually buy it but you can see here um, let's see this is a glass works velvet um, coleus plant so that's a beautiful looking one and you can see that they've got some other coleus so these are kong coleus the ones right over on the on the right and then um, you can see that these ones have larger leaves um, really nice looking one these are by proven winners actually i don't know how much the price is i would assume these are 12.99 as well so plant foldies that are watching this video right now if you made it this far thank you so much i hope you stay to the end um, let me know what you think about coleus plants are you growing coleus plants um, do you know any other places where i could find coleus plants because this one right here is one of the beautiful ones this is the split splash coleus plant i actually bought this one and it is doing fabulous for me i mean it is just out of this world look at that red and yellow um leaves it's just gorgeous and 
it's surprisingly you know coleus i never ever really paid attention to coleus plants until this year i remember my grandmother had a bunch and i've always considered them like a common um plant that you just grow outdoors but now that i'm looking at these i mean wouldn't you think that these coleus plants would be more popular i would think people who grow house plants or indoor plants would be more into them because I realized that coleus can be grown indoors successfully. And you can even see right here, this is one I want. I wish I could just get a cutting of this, honestly, because I love how um, light the pink leaves are here. It is absolutely gorgeous. And look at this one. This is a huge one for $34.99. But look at how beautiful this coleus is, even that dark foliage. And that's the thing about plants, especially plants with a lot of diversity. It makes it fun to be able to just grow several varieties um, I kind of have that OCD um, going for me so I really obsess about plants it's a good OCD um, because I can actually put my energies into just taking care of them and you can see over here we've got a, a wax begonia hanging basket I will say with um, with Callaways, they just do such a great job sourcing up many plants, being able to get plants that are cost effective. There's different varieties of plants. Their staff are always kind, especially at the Prosper um, Callaways where I go. They always um, greet me by my name and um, I just love it. And you can see here, I love these small Kelanchoe starters for $2.99 right next to the spring cactus as well. And I've got some purple oxalis here love that i really need i'm debating on whether i should just plant my oxalis in the ground since they are perennials for my growing zone i think they make great ground cover i remember um there's one that just always comes back year after year in my front patio for some reason it ended up um finding its way into my front patio lawn and i'm not i don't have the heart to really just get rid of it and over here we've got some more hibiscus flowers look at this yellow one gorgeous looking one so that's why i want to get the variegated forms and you can see right here more plants so glad that there's no one really shopping and i'm going to walk over here so i talk about like hanging baskets and what people use them for these potato vine hanging baskets are i believe for 34.99 but look it's a nice full and lush one and i love the variegated form i actually like this potato vine um shape because it kind of reminds me of um, maple leaves and the variegation is stunning all of these potato vines will grow in full sun in hot weather like texas and you can see here we've got um, the neon version and a sea and i say a sea full of beautiful caladiums love caladiums this one is absolutely stunning look at that pink i want to grow more caladiums as well i grew a bunch of caladiums actually um a couple years back from bulbs and they were just absolutely stunning there's a couple of caladiums i want to get from thailand that are some really beautiful hybrids um there's really a debate on whether um, caladiums can be really grown as a indoor house plant long term i feel like they are if you're able to give them the right conditions especially in the winter you're probably going to have to grow caladiums under a grow light and make sure that the the room they're in is actually warm but look at this these almost remind me of like a syngonium holly that light white ghostly color and then this one right here what do you guys think about this caladium so this one's for $14.99 i believe yeah $14.99 love all the pink so for those that love pink plants caladiums are your plant um, let me know in the comments again or even in the live premiere chats what you think about caladiums um, if you think that they're a plant for you i definitely love some caladiums i've bought a couple recently and i may buy some bulbs to grow in the summer just to see if i can get some really nice hybrids but you can see here as a pan out what a gorgeous sea of caladiums at callaways with these caladiums being priced at $14.99 I'm tempted to buy them because they don't they look like syngoniums or alocasia I just don't want to spend all that money again I do plan shopping videos daily and it's one of those things where I really have to watch my budget although I love plants um, plants can get a little bit expensive let me know in the comments if you agree but like right here look at this one I would totally buy this because look at how dense it is $7.99 
plant foldy should i buy this um caladium again because look at that that looks like a syngonium but like a highly colorful syngonium it's so gorgeous and it's so compact it looks so cool and i think it would make such a good looking plant for $7.99 that's not bad and look at this one as well for $7.99 i hope that they can continue to carry these types of caladiums i love the little speckles on it i think it's precious and gorgeous and Caladiums, I know that there are some people who are all about caladiums too, and that's the thing about plants. Like this one right here is for $29.99, but can you tell me that this plant isn't gorgeous? Look at that. It's so stunning. Now, the only thing about caladiums, again, is you don't want to really overwater them as well because it'll rot the bulb. But with caladiums, if you just leave them in the shade and get them some bright indirect light, they will give you some beautiful colors. And as I pan over here, I just want to show you all of the greenery that is available at this Callaway's. Talk about a beautiful variegated bougainvillea. Love that a lot. It is absolutely stunning as well. And as I pan over here, look at that um, large dracaena and tons and tons of hibiscus and hanging baskets of petunias. Petunias are the flower of the hour. I will continue to say that. And you can see there, what a gorgeous looking crane decoration and more hanging baskets here. plant foldy or live in the north dallas area i would highly recommend going to the callaways nursery in prosper texas it is a newer callaways and you can see here i want to buy this coleus plant although i believe this is for 29.99 um, look at how large these leaves are and it's yellow love the fact that it is a yellow coleus plant and I just want to pan over here and focus more on the coleus plants. I hope you guys are not tired of me talking about coleus plants because I am literally searching for different varieties. You can see this coleus plant has more of like a maroon color with green borders. And then the other one has like a red color with yellow borders. But um, if I'm going to pick what, another coleus to buy, I think I'm going to buy this one right here, this red one. What a nice looking one. And this is for $12.99. I'm going to repot it in an 8-inch planter to get a little bit more height. I also want to cut it up and actually get a couple of cuttings. I think that that would be easy to propagate and I can get some more free plants. I am all about free plants through propagation. And you can see right here what a gorgeous looking coleus. Look at this pink one. Love that a lot for $12.99. I wish I would be able to ship out plants to all of my viewers and subscribers. Again, I will be doing a plant giveaway, a Monstera Thai Constellation, free Monstera Thai Constellation plant giveaway. Um, I did mention that I will post the actual um, video reel on my Instagram for you to participate and like. It will come out soon, so just stay tuned to that. But you can see here is another beautiful proven winners coleus plant. And when I put it right next to this one, so we've got a neon green and then the other one is yellow. Gorgeous looking plant. I may end up buying these because gosh, I don't know what it is about coleus plants. I don't know if it's the color that necessarily draws me into coleus plants or is it just the fact that they're easy to propagate? Like I'm literally a obsessed with growing and propagating plants. Um, if you don't know this about me, I'm all about propagating plants, even pothos plants. I remember propagating like 50 cuttings just because I could one year. And I just realized that I was just, um, you know, flooding my house with propagations of like pothos plants. But this one is definitely a coleus I'm going to buy just because I do like the coloration. That purple tone with the pink veining is just really stunning. And I want to go do more research and find some really good specimens of coleus plants. Again, with coleus plants, um, um, the one drawback about them is they do need a lot of water. So I'm surprised that I'm able to um, grow coleus plants because I grow, you know, I don't really water my plants often indoors. They are growing outdoors, so it's easy for me to take a watering can and just, um, 
drench them in water or take a hose versus like growing plants indoors where you are, it's a little bit more manual. Um, let me know in the comments, plant foliage, what you think about these coleus plants, if you're currently growing them, and what other uh, plants you'd love to see. Again, I love hearing from you guys. And even after this live premiere or after watching this video, I really want to encourage you guys to leave comments in the comment section, please. And you can see here another coleus. This is for $2.99. I love this one. I have this coleus plant, but what I like about this coleus plant is it is a coleus plant that can take full sun. It's got some nice variegation and I'm just gonna pan over here and show you what a gorgeous looking section. I, I'll do a more in-depth tour of the Prosperous, um, Prosper Texas Coleus, not Coleus, Callaway's Nursery at some point next week. But for now, hopefully you have enjoyed my plant shopping video at Lowe's and you've been able to see some other plants here. Um, it is amazing plant foldies, all of my regulars on the channel encouraging people to hit the like button. It's just so much fun to engage with you guys. And as always, please make sure you are hitting the like button for my video. It really does help me out a lot. That is the number one way to support my channel, aside from like watching it. And if you can, please subscribe to my channel. This is Richie at Growfolds. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.